Gallagher from Sweetwater, and I'm coming to you from a super cool location. We're at one of the great New York City studios with Ricky St. Hilaire. It's great to see you, man. Great to see you. Appreciate it, man. We, uh, we had a chance to meet last night. It's the first time we've actually met in person. In person, yes, yes, so. yes yeah, nah. It was an honor, man. It was great, because like I said, I, I celebrate you and your work. Nowadays, it's hard for kids to get the information that they need, and you do something very special. Like wow. I gotta tell you, I'm a fan. Thank you for saying so. I really appreciate that. And man, all the work that you've done as well, Whitney Houston, Buster Rhymes, I mean, we could go on for the whole video talking about that, which we're gonna do another video about that. Yeah, we have to. But right now, we're talking about Quad Recording Studios, and you go way back with this uh, facility. It was actually founded or started by Lou Gonzalez in 78, right? Yes, that's correct. And I came in this place at 17 years old. Wow. I came here doing a gospel band, just playing playing behind a gospel, some gospel overdub. Nice. So from then on, I moved up to doing some hip hop and then I got with Buster, then I worked with some of the top producers in hip hop from Swiss Beats to Just Blaze, Rockweiler. Two thousand and five, two thousand and four, was uh, starting a studio down in Tampa, Florida. We had Fran Manzella come down, and uh, we got all the drawings. We got the building, we got the location, and uh, right before we started, I got a phone call from uh, a good friend, Dave Malikpour, and uh, he let me know that a uh, world famous recording studio is up for sale. All right, gives me the name, do the research, and Quad Studios, obviously, it's known, and uh, you know, started looking into it, did the feasibility studies, uh, flew up here, talked to the staff, and yeah, just made more sense. So yeah. we abandoned the Tampa project and uh, we took over. You're one of the co owners here, and sort of the studio success story. You started out as an intern, right? Yeah, actually, it was uh, 2009. I moved from, from Italy. Um, I actually didn't know much about the history of the studio, but I you know, started an, an internship, and then from there, um, I became a technician. So, mm -hmm. you know, take care of all the equipment. And then in 2012, we became partner. I became partner with Ricky. And from, from there, we just start building rooms and expand. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So it's a little different configuration for a studio. You know, I guess we sometimes have a picture of like the LA studio where there's all these rooms spread all out and everything. And we're vertical here, aren't we, with the studios Correct. on different floors? Correct. Real estate is, uh, you know, we're not as lucky as uh, out west. We make it work. Yeah. We make it work. Yeah, yeah. So how is the studio arranged now? What floors do you have here in the building? Quad Studios today is floors 12, 10, and 3. We have uh, five rooms total. We have three rooms on the 10th floor, ranging from uh, large, medium, small. The 12th floor is a medium-sized room, but what we did, we saw a lot of people doing uh, release events or showcases, things like that. So we figured, why don't we equip the 12th floor with an event space? Mm -hmm. So we put a club upstairs, the Quad Club. Right, there you go. Club with a Q. <laughs> right. uh, and the third floor, which is the floor we're on, um, that kind of filled the void of having a large format room, even though we have a large room on 10, but it's not quite the size of this. Mm -hmm. So this kind of completed, you know, what we were looking for. It's, it's you got the large live room, large uh, control room, and uh, it's been a hit so far. We ended up putting uh, what is probably the biggest speakers on the East Coast, the uh, Osberger Quattro system in here. And right. yeah, it's been a hit since Which we- Quattro with it. Quad, I mean, that, that's only- it, We had to. It just made sense. <laughs> so let's talk about the, the studio. We're going to kind of go in reverse order. We are in Q5, which kind of simultaneously is one of the oldest rooms, but also one of the newest Ooh, rooms. Right. Yeah. We were able to acquire this floor this year, so we kind of kept the original aesthetics of what was here from the beginning, mm -hmm. and then made something, you know, made some additions as far as modernizing the equipment, the sound, but acoustically, it's the original sound that was back in the day when all the rock and roll bands were here. Right. And it's a great sound. Right now, I think we're set up for uh, a Broadway thing is coming in. And basically, where we're located, we can kind of tailor to a bunch of different genres, a bunch of different styles of music. So. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So we've got the main room here that we're in now, obviously the live room. A couple of booths? Yes, a couple of ISO booths. Boom. So we have the main booth right here. And like I said, we can set up 
whether this is great for drums, just doing it in this room, that I've done that a lot, believe it or not. Sometimes I've put the singer inside of the lounge. Right. And the way that it's organized, the, the singer can watch everything that's going on. Drummers in here, bass cabinet, guitar cabinets, and we go to town. It's right, fun. Right, right. Well, let's walk through. You mentioned the lounge. There's yeah. A, as you said, there's a window there, so you can actually see very clearly through, and we'll go on into the control room. Right now we're in Studio Q5. This is... Uh, how long has it been? 18 years, like this is way fast forward. And uh, we took this floor about six months ago. It used to be, I think, uh, gray noise. Mm -hmm. And after COVID, uh, you know, it changed the landscape a little bit. So they had to uh, shut down, they closed the door and uh, saw an opportunity, we took over. And we, uh, this is a typical quad, old school room, but we revamped it, made it more modern looking. This is more in line, if you look at Studio Q1, which is our flagship room, it kind of has the same feel, same sound. So it's definitely modernized the rooms. One of the things that's very eye-catching when you come into this room, the newest mm -hmm. room, is the, the two Ravens. Yeah, we decided to go with this um, uh, to you know try something new uh, and keep everything in reach of the engineers. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have like a, you know, like patch bay, like back in the day, the patch bays were on the wall and you had to have an, an assistant patching the mic pre's and, and, and everything. Now it can all be done in one, you know, from one position. Right. And, uh, and they look cool. And they look cool, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So it's sort of that you've been configuring the studios for the modern workflow. For where sure. a lot of times it's one person engineering, producing, maybe working with a single artist, maybe with a band or a larger group. But yeah. you want to accommodate that uh, that workflow. It's very different. Mm -hmm, definitely. Some, sometimes even uh, producer they come in without engineer. They just want to, you know, create beats on on the laptop. So they need to, you know, the easiest they they, they can work around a bit. Right. Right. So this is a control room. Very comfortable space. Sounds great in here. It's not super dead. It's live enough that it doesn't suck all the life out of the room, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's the vibe we go for here in, in Quad. Basically, it's not to, some people like dead rooms, some people like live rooms. We just like it so it's nice and smooth, nice and neutral, mm -hmm. because we have to cater to so many different types of music. And so back in the day, this used to have an SSL, but I think it was uh, E-Series. Mm -hmm. They never saw a J or a G, but it was just the old fashioned E and then we basically brought it up to today's standard, mm -hmm. and we can go down the list. We have a couple of Ravens, which are great. Our mains are Oxburger mains. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but it's, I mean, they thump. We have 418s. Crazy. <laughs> 415s, and two huge horns that, I mean, this room thumps. Yeah, it has to. It has to almost compress from the volume when you're. <laughs> <laughs> the air just has to go. Oh, it's compress. just uh, sometimes it's just woo. It's That's awesome. Insane. That's awesome. As far as audio goes, we're using basically what we have. We have a concept, a thought of a little bit old, a little bit new. So sometimes we have our Apogee symphonies, and we still have the original 192s. Mm -hmm. So. Depending on what you want to do, whether you want to stay in the box or you want to touch a little bit of analog, we have gear for that. We have all kinds of mic pre's basically, and we have gear we can bring in as well and a couple of compressors. Set up for the modern workflow where oftentimes it's a single engineer producer yes, running, yes. running the whole, the whole show. Generally, most of the kids that come in here, they hear the name Quad and they book a studio mm -hmm. and they have no idea what they need. They don't come with a producer, they find a beat online, and then now the our engineers here basically have to wear multiple hats. Uh -huh. They have to help with the production side and actually help with the engineering side. So our workflow is to work that way. And sometimes we have enough space that if we're doing a session with a producer and writers and stuff, we can accommodate Sure, everybody. you got sofas and things and yeah. couches and lounge areas and things. Well, this is great, it's a very comfortable room. Sonically, it's really, really pleasing. It's like whatever you leave out of here and you play it in your car, you play it home, it breaks, basically translates very well. Can you tell us some of the names that they would recognize who've worked in these rooms? Yeah, lately we had uh, uh, Lil Baby, Lil Dirk, uh, Her, a few years back, Pop Smoke, mm -hmm. did, a, did a lot of work upstairs in the, on the 12th floor, Beyonce, uh, Aza Paraki, I can keep going. It, yeah, they, <laughs> when, you, when you look on the site and you look at the client list, mm -hmm. it's sort of easier to talk about the ones that haven't recorded here than it is the ones yeah, that have, pretty much everybody's probably. recorded here through the yeah. years. Yeah. 
So over here is Q1. This is like, uh, this is my room. Yeah? <laughs> this I is like, where you live? <laughs> this is where I call home. Right. And um, I just like, it's to me, it's the perfect hybrid system mm -hmm. where we have a full analog console and, you know, there's a bunch of outboard gear behind me and, you know, you can dip and dabble into both worlds. It's a mixed room, but it has a great live room. We can capture drums, a small piece band if you want, but I've done string sections in that room. <laughs> I have a lot of fun in this room. I bet. <laughs> this is like, like, I can't tell you how I'm excited when I hear audio in this room. It's not about listening to music with its tainted color. It's about listening to what's really there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to achieve. That's what I try to find in a room is whatever I'm listening is what's really there. So then whatever we create, whenever we find the magic, we leave the room, the magic is there. And this is the place to do it. This is the room. It's, it's, it's no matter what you do, we you know we have the typical Oxberger, but it's not the big quad Oxberger that's down in Q4. But it's two fifteens, four subs. You can do damage. You, <laughs> when the, when the client wants to party, great. But when you want to listen to a nice mid volume, it's a sweet. It just gives you a sweet sound. Right. It's a beautiful room. Very comfortable. So one of the gems of. Q1 is the lounge. Mm -hmm. When you come into the lounge, you can just see the view of Times Square. It, it, sometimes when I'm stuck and I'm mixing or coming up with ideas and I just need to figure something out, I just walk in this room and I just get just lost in the marvel. When you want to open up that part of the brain, sometimes you're stuck. This is just a great room where you just get lost and right. see the marvel of what Times Square is. You know, when somebody's usually selling a spot, it, it needs it needs a needs help. Yeah. So that that's the first thing we did is is we did change a few things, uh, made the rooms a little bit more modern. Mm -hmm. We actually built the tenth floor was a reception. The whole floor was a reception. We broke that up. We put our first room that I built here was Studio Q2. That was more of a digital room. Put it this way: when I came in, you had to rent a Pro Tools rig. Hmm. Some rooms didn't even have Pro Tools rigs. That wow. was a rental. Yeah. So that was one of the first rooms. We put a Pro Tools rig. We made everything within reach. It's a smaller, more compact room. And uh, we kind of started following suit with the other rooms a little mm -hmm. more. Over here we have Q2. Yep. It's a special room. It's It doesn't have the big speakers like in some of the other rooms. It doesn't have, you know, the small speakers like in the next room we're about to see, Q3. But it has a unique sound. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, DJ Khaled, when he comes to town, this is like his favorite room. <laughs> and he loves that room because it's the right size and the speakers just fill the room and you can have a really good time in that room. Yeah, well, there's plenty of bottom end. You got the subs going and stuff. You can you can fill that room up with sound, no problem. Oh, no problem. Yeah, we're, we're listening in a little bit on the session and it sounds great in there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll peep in there. There's a session going on, but they're cool for us to just kind of peep in and get a vibe. and. You guys can at least see what, how we do it in New York a little bit. I love it. So Mitch, over here we have Q3. This is a, it's a small overdub room. Uh, a lot of guys use it as a writing room. Sometimes I find myself mixing in that room, especially we're doing like a bunch of projects and I have I need three, four rooms, and I'll give up the bigger rooms to some of the other engineers, some of the other mixers. They look at me like, oh, you're not. I was like, there's something special about having just a small, intimate, close-up room. So this is Q4. We just got into this space a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, this whole floor, there's, there's a whole concept behind this whole floor because a lot of people have been doing listening parties and different things like that. So Ricky, the genius that he is, basically was like, we have to figure out a, a, a new way of doing these events. Mm -hmm. This floor came up for grabs. He got it and he basically took the 12th floor, made a studio on one half, and then on the other half, he turned it into an event space. Nice. 
and they're tied line together. So there's things that we could do. Whatever we happen in here can happen in here. That was the creation of this room. Yeah, I saw. I was wandering around. There's the the booth. It's a big booth, an oversized booth attached here. And there's also a lounge area. And I saw there were tie lines and things back there as well. So, yes. So you really can split things up and do some tracking up here if you need to as well. As you can use this whole space, even the event space, to track into this room. Mm -hmm. well, let's go check out the event space. So the event space, man, this is this is super cool. Yeah, this, this is what I was talking about when we were in uh, Q4. The concept of this is to give people a great place where they can come and have their listening parties or different events. And now it's not just, hey, we're going into a studio, destroying the studio, putting the equipment at risk because people have their drinks sitting on top of the console doing... Sure. <laughs> this is this is a nightmare. So Ricky's idea was to take this floor, gut it out, and turn it into this fabulous space. Yeah. So we got a pool cool. table, we have a bar, we have it. Comfortable seating, sound system over there. I mean, you're, you're kind of ready for a party. Yeah, basically. Actually, there's one coming in here. Yeah, Maybe we can join in. I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> but I can also see, man, it'd be cool to record in here. I mean, that's a, Oh, yeah, no, it's. That's it's, got some fun reverb. You could have some fun, like, Every room on this floor is tied together to the control room. Right. right. That's right behind us. Right. Awesome. Man, Ricky, thanks so much for giving us a tour of, of Quad. I know this is kind of your stomping grounds, and you've, you've been here since the early days, in addition to all the other great studios in New York as well. I mean, you've worked, you've worked everywhere doing your engineering and producing and things. And, but we just really appreciate you taking the time to show us around today. It's such a cool facility. We enjoyed having you. Yeah, so it much history here, and, and uh, man, you're the one to, to share it. You've seen so much of it. <laughs> All right. right. Great to see you, buddy. Great. Same here. All right. Take care. Thank you for joining us. We're at Quad Recording Studios in New York City, one of the great studios in New York. Happy you joined us today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sweetwater.